In this video I want to show you a few tips and tricks to help you change a box full of bits into a working clock. Cut the holding tabs with a sharp knife. Do not cut too close to the part as this could cause a top ply to break out. To avoid confusion, only cut out the parts you require. If you have a belt sander, you can use it to remove the excess tab. Just be careful to only remove the tab and not the tooth. You can also sand the tab flush by hand. You will find this easier if you hold the part in a vise. To make the shown sanding board, start with a thin piece of ply or wood. You could also take an ice cream stick. Sand one edge half round. Use good quality sandpaper. I recommend you take cloth backed. A good source for this is the sanding belts used with belt sanders. 180 grade is fine enough to get a good finish. Cut a piece of heavy duty double sided sticky tape and stick the sandpaper on. With the backing removed, press the wood onto the tape and fold the sandpaper tight over the stick. You can use this to sand pretty much the whole clock. When the sandpaper becomes blunt, just remove the paper and stick on some new. As you can see, you can use a sanding board to sand even the round surfaces. Pay particular attention to the teeth, as these should be smooth in order for your clock to run efficiently. Cut the arbors slightly longer than the required length. If you have a disc sander, use it. Just keep checking the length, it's too short, it's harder to rectify than too long. You can of course just file the arbor to length. Try and keep the ends as square as possible. It is vital to the functioning of the clock that all arbors should be perfectly smooth. Here I am using 800 grade wet and dry and finishing off with a fine grade steel wool. This is how your finished arbor should look. To help sanding the spaces, you can clamp them between two stop rings and using the sanding board, get them nice and smooth. Both intermediate and the escapement wheel arbors are glued directly on the arbor. Clamp the arbor in a vise and measure the distance as given in the drawing. Now flip over and reclamp in the vise. You do not need a great amount of glue to get a strong joint. You've got the amount just right when after pressing and turning the part, a small bead of glue appears around the circumference. It 
It is the same process with the remaining arbors, but after clamping you should remove the arbor before the glue sets. Now for some fun. When you have finished all the arbors, assemble them in the frame. Keep a constant pressure on the upper frame and align the arbors so they snap into their holes. Once all arbors sit, twist the mini arbor. The whole gear train should easily turn and come gradually to a stop. If this is not the case, take a look at my video, The Elusive Tick. Here you can see the assembling of the hour train. It should also run smoothly. Once the clock is fully assembled, mount on the wall. To synchronise the hands, turn the minute hand until the hour hand points to 12 o'clock. Now loosen the minute hand and also turn to 12 o'clock. Then re-tighten. As you can see, you can adjust the time while the clock is running both backwards and forwards, but only turn the minute hand. Now set the pendulum swinging. The anchor should have an equal amount of travel both left and right. As you can see here, the left side travels slightly further. To correct this, hold the crutch tight and lift the anchor on the left side slightly up. Just keep adjusting until both sides are equal. If, despite your best efforts, the clock stops, one good way of loosening it up is to loosen and disengage the anchor and let the weight free fall. This should remove any remaining friction in the gear train. Now all that remains is for you to sit back and enjoy.